Hello everyone, welcome once again. In this video, we'll be learning about energy changes, bond energies and few related questions. Let's start with the chem energy changes first. So whenever a chemical reaction happens, that is a chemical change takes place. How do we know that it's a chemical change and not a physical change? When a chemical change takes place, there is a change in the energy. That is either heat is given out or heat is taken in that is the temperature may rise or temperature may decrease or one or more new substances are formed now we can make out whether a new substance is formed by either we can see some change maybe we can see a bubbles because some gases are formed or some new solid or is formed or there is a color change this few things can confirm that there is a chemical change which has taken place. When we say that heat is given out to the surrounding, that is an exothermic reaction, that is any reaction where heat is given out to the surrounding or heat is taken in from the surrounding, that is an endothermic reaction. But when we say that heat is given out to the surrounding, or heat is taken in from the surrounding, what does the surrounding means? The surroundings may include the reaction mixture itself. Reaction mixture itself means the mixture of reactants or if the reactants are dissolved in the water, then the water itself or you can say an aqueous mixture of the reactants. It also means the air around the container in which the reaction is taking place or it may include the container itself also. The container means the it may be a beaker in which the reaction is taking place or it may be a test tube or it may be a conical flask or any other apparatus in which the reaction is taking place or it may be any other substance which is dipped inside the reaction mixture. For example, it may be a thermometer or a stirring rod or any spatula or anything which is dipped inside the mixture. So surrounding may include all these four substances and when the heat is given out to the surrounding, the temperature of all these four substances that is the surrounding may increase and if the reaction is endothermic, the temperature of all these substances may decrease. So when a reaction takes place in an exothermic reaction, when heat is released to the surrounding, the surrounding may get hot. And if it's an endothermic reaction, then heat is absorbed from the surrounding and the surrounding may get cold. That is the temperature of the surrounding may decrease. We can represent the exothermic and endothermic reactions with the help of such energy level diagrams. Now let's understand what are these en energy level diagrams. The energy level diagrams are the diagrams that shows the energy of the reactants and products on y-axis and the reaction pathway on x-axis. Now we know that in an exothermic reaction, the reactants loses energy to the surroundings. So energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. So we can represent an energy level diagram of an exothermic reaction with such an ex labeled axis where energy is labeled on the y axis and reaction pathway on x axis. Now as we know that the energy of the reactants are higher, then it has to be presented by a line which is at a higher level in the graph. And energy of the products at the lower le level compared to reactants. And the change in the energy, that is the difference in the energy between the reactants and products can be given, can be, can give the value of the energy which is given out to the surrounding. And this difference in the energy can also be presented by the symbol delta H. Now delta H is also called as enthalpy change which represents change in the energy. So this is the energy level diagram for an exothermic reaction. Similarly, an endothermic reaction can also be presented by an energy level diagram and in this as we know that the reactants gain energy from the surroundings, so energy of the products is at a higher level than the energy of the reactants. 
so energy of the reactants has to be at a lower level of the diagram and energy of the products at higher level of the diagram and the change in the energy is the energy taken in from the surrounding and also presented by delta h so this is how we present the exothermic change and endothermic change of a reaction with the help of energy level diagrams after energy changes now let's understand what is a bond energy so bond energy term itself means the average energy needed to break one mole of a particular bond now when we say a particular bond means we are talking about any one type of bond say suppose we are talking about hydrogen hydrogen bond now hydrogen uh, hydrogen bond that is the bond in an hydrogen molecule has a bond energy of 436 kilojoules per mole now this means that to break this hydrogen bond we need 436 kilojoules per mole but all the different types of bonds have a different bond energies so we'll be learning about it in this video when a chemical reaction takes place either the bonds are broken or formed that is actually in the reaction both the processes occurs that is on the reactant sides the bonds are broken and when the products are formed the bonds are made that is new bonds are made to break the bonds in the reactant sides energy is needed that is we need to supply the energy to break the bond now as energy is absorbed bond breaking is an endothermic process and opposite process happens when the bonds are formed in the product side that is when the bonds are formed bond making releases the energy to the sur surrounding and so bond making is an exothermic process and as we know already that when a chemical reaction takes place both of these processes occurs that is the energy is absorbed to break the bonds in the reactant sites and energy is also released when the bonds are formed on the product side and these two processes that is energy absorbing and energy releasing decides whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic depending on which value is greater let's understand this process with the help of a general reaction say a and b are the reactants reacting together to form the product c and d now when we say that a and b are reacting then in the reactant sides bond should be breaking and when the products are formed c and d the bond should be made that is an endothermic process occurs in breaking the bonds of a and b and an exothermic reaction occurs when in product c and d are formed suppose if this bond breaking value is greater and the bond making value is smaller then subtracting the smaller value from the greater value the delta h value which we get in this case will be a positive value that is subtracting a smaller value of exothermic from the greater value of endothermic gives us a positive delta h value so an endothermic reaction always have a positive delta h value and if opposite of this happens that is bond breaking has a smaller value and bond making has a greater value so subtracting this greater value from smaller value the value of delta h obtained this way is going to be a negative value so whenever an exothermic reaction takes place the delta h value is always going to be a negative value so from this we can conclude that for an exothermic reaction the energy taken in to break the bonds in the reactants is less than the energy given out when new bonds are formed in the product side and in an endothermic reaction the energy taken in to break the bonds in the reactants is more than the energy released when new bonds are formed 
so here we can note one thing that a delta h always has a positive value when the reaction is endothermic and a delta h always have a negative value when exothermic reaction is happening now let's solve an example using bond energies here is first question it says Calculate the energy change in the reaction and you can see here there are certain bond energies given like there is first hydrogen hydrogen bond and oxygen oxygen bond that is a bond energy of the oxygen molecule and an OH bond energy. The reaction given here shows that it is hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. Now if we look at the bonds within this reaction then we can see that there are two hydrogen molecules reacting. So we have to use two hydrogen bond energies, one oxygen bond energy in the reactant side and in the product side we can see that, that there are two water molecules formed. In these two water molecules there are two OH bond each so in all there are four OH bonds. So substituting this bond energy values in this we can calculate the enthalpy change that is delta H. So two hydrogen molecule bonds gives 2 multiplied by 436 plus 1 oxygen molecule bond energy that is 498 and OH bonds is uh, the bond energy of OH is 464 which has to be multiplied by 4. This can be then summarized to 872 plus 498 and this will be the bond energy of the reactant side subtracting the bond energy of the uh, product side that is 1856. This can be further summarized to 1370 minus 1856 which gives us the enthalpy change value of minus 486 kilojoules per mole. Now that clearly shows that during this reaction minus 486 kilojoules of energy is released because delta H value is a negative value. So this clearly shows that this reaction is an exothermic reaction and so if we want to draw an energy level diagram for this reaction it can be shown as this. Again where energy is presented on y axis and reaction pathway on x axis and the energy of the reactants is shown at a higher level and energy of the products at a lower level and this difference in the energy is delta H that is the amount of energy given out during the reaction that is the energy released in the exothermic reaction. Let us have a look at another example again it says calculate the energy change in the reaction. The reaction here is two hydrogen fluoride molecule decomposes to form hydrogen and fluorine and again there are some bond energies related bond energy values are given in this table and substituting this bond energy values according to the reaction we have to multiply 2 with the bond energy of HF that is 568 and subtract it with hydrogen uh, bond energy that is 436 plus the fluorine bond energy 158. Summarizing this values further we get 1136 minus 594 which finally gives us the value of plus 542 kilojoules per mole. Now this positive value clearly indicates that this is an endothermic reaction where 542 kilojoules per mole amount of energy is absorbed during the reaction. And if we want to further draw the energy level diagram for the same reaction it has to be again the energy on the y axis and reaction pathway on x axis. As this is an endothermic reaction the reactant of uh, the energy of the reactants has to be at the lower level and energy of the products at higher level and this difference in the energy is the delta H value that is the amount of energy taken in 
during the chemical reaction so this is an endothermic reaction and so 542 kilojoules per mole amount of energy is this delta h energy which is absorbed during the reaction so this way you have learnt two examples regarding the bond energies first example we had taken about an exothermic reaction and example two shows us an endothermic reaction and along with this we have also learned how to draw the energy level diagrams for the different energies that is exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction so i hope students you have understood all about the energy changes the bond energies how to use this bond energies to calculate the enthalpy change that is energy change of a reaction and from that you can draw a conclusion whether the reaction is exothermic and endothermic so in this video you have learnt all about this and this is the base for our next video that is in the next video we will be learning about lattice energy where you will need this knowledge as a base so keep watching